Welcome everybody to Crypt of the Necrodancer. I am Jen, also known as RT Lozalda on Twitch. I have been playing this game on stream for a couple of months now since it was in early access. It is now on full release and it's fantastic and I'm super excited about it. I've still been playing it a bunch, uh, both on stream and off stream. I've had a lot of people hanging out in my chat that tell me that after watching me play it, they wanted to go play it, and so they've bought it, and they are loving it so far, but they're having a hard time getting some of the basics down. This game has a lot to learn about it. There's a lot of different things going on, a lot of different things to keep in mind, and there's a lot of trial and error trying to learn how to do things. And so what I said I would do is I would take everybody kind of through some of the basics of it. I am not pretending to be an expert on the game. I am certainly not one of those advanced technique crazy speedrunner people who are super phenomenal at all these crazy ways to abuse different weapons and enemy patterns and things like that. But the basics enough I can show you. So we're going to kind of go through a kind of a demo dungeon that I set up that just kind of shows a lot of different things that are that are going on. So as an intro before we get started, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, Crypt of the Necrodancer is a roguelike rhythm-based dungeon crawler. Everything is procedurally generated. Uh, all the levels are just a little bit different. There's different zones, and then within each of those zones, each of those four zones, there are three levels. On each level, there is a mini-boss that you have to kill in order to advance to the next level. And at the end of each zone is a bigger boss that you have to beat to go on to the next zone. Uh, if you die, you start over at the very beginning. There is no kind of like save point in the middle. This game is very dependent on music and staying on the beat. All of the movement happens on the beat. Your movement, the enemy's movement, your attacks, opening things, digging, everything happens on the beat. Now, this is kind of a, a double-edged sword kind of thing. It makes it really easy to predict when things are going to attack you, but it also means if you need to move somewhere that an enemy is currently, you know, aimed at, you've got to find something else to do with your with your beat. And you could just miss the beat, uh, unless you're playing as particular characters, but there's advantages to keeping on the beat. You get your groove chain, which is kind of a combo multiplier, from staying on beat. This is not missing any beats. This is not trying to dig a space that you can't dig. This is not getting hit. It's keeping everything going, and you'll see once we get started, as you get your, your multiplier going, uh, the floral, unless you turn it off in a setting, will kind of turn into a disco pattern. That lets you know that, yes, you're, you're getting more points for, for all your kills and things like that. Different enemies have different health levels, and even different kinds of, or different colors of enemies within a particular class, like the slimes, for instance, different colors can have different health, and they'll have different movement patterns. And then it's one of those things you just kind of have to learn and start to pick up and say, okay, well, the green one will only take one hit, and the blue one will take two hits. And then there's also learning how, how the weapons will allow you to hit different enemies all at the same time, or different strengths. So we're going to get started and, and start going through some stuff. So here we just got some basic slimes, uh, and this kind of highlights the different movement patterns everybody's got. So the green guy, he just stays stills. It is literally impossible to get hit by him without actually actively trying to do it. So right now we just got a coin multiplier 2. That's my base multiplier based on uh, some upgrades that I've already purchased for my character. So if I stab the guy, now it goes up to 3, and I got Disco Floor. The blue guy, he only moves up and down, and he only moves every other beat. So that's one of those things, okay, you can use that to your advantage. If I attack him from up here, he goes away after a while. I can only hit him once before he goes to another space, so I'd have to follow him. But then I run the risk of him being able to run into me. If I attack him from the side, I don't have to ever worry about him hitting me. I can get to him, he can't touch me, everything's fine. The other thing to keep in mind while you're doing this is that when, you, when you're attacking something or doing any kind of movement, you take priority. You take priority over the enemy's movement, the enemy's attack. So if I were to hit this guy and it kills him, it does not matter if I'm in range for him to hit me on his next move. I, I win. He's dead. Um, if that does not happen, if I don't kill him, then he has the opportunity to attack me on the same beat. So that's something that you can use to your advantage, um, and I'll show you a little bit of that when I go to fight some of mini-bosses. Uh, It'll make more sense then. For now, we're just gonna hang out next to him. Stab, stab, and he's gone. So now we have this orange guy who just moves in a square. He moves every beat, moves in a perfect square. Sometimes they go the other direction, but 
he's not going to spontaneously change direction. Whatever direction he starts at, that's where he's going. So you can see, all I'm going to do is, like, just chase him. I can't actually get to him. So, in this case, I need to be able to, like, get on beat with him. So I have to do something we call dig buffering. So I, it's a way to stay on beat without actually, like, stopping moving and losing my groove chain. You can use that to your advantage when you're trying to avoid an enemy or bait an enemy into a particular area. So the blue and the orange guys, they move in a square pattern, but on an axis. They move in the diagonal. So what happens with these guys is they're actually elementals. So if I kill the blue guy, he leaves an ice patch, which will cause me to slide. Different things will cause ice patches in the game, so that's just something to watch out for. Uh, if you, When you're on the ice patch, you don't hit your direction button. Whatever direction you hit the ice at, you're going to move that way automatically. So the fire guy leaves a little hot patch of hot coals. If I stand on that for a beat, or whether it's because I stop or because I hit another enemy on it uh, while I'm on it, I will take damage from that. Right now you see the song bars have turned red. You only have until the end of the song to be able to kill your mini boss or exit the level. If the song ends, it will automatically drop me to the next floor and make me face off with whatever mini boss I neglected to kill. So here we got some skeletons. So all the skeletons move the same. They have an offbeat and they have an onbeat. So you can see he puts his arms up before he moves. So I've got kind of uh, the same pattern I had with the, with the blue slime. So this guy just takes one hit. He's, he's your basic one. Here we've got a green skeleton. So he's a little bit different. So he'll have the same movement pattern, but he's got two hearts. The strange thing is, when I stab him, he goes down to one heart, his head falls off, and he runs the opposite direction from whatever way you hit him. So you can either let him go if you're not worried about it, if you're not doing a score run, or you don't want the gold, and you're just like, get out of my face, yeah, I can leave him. Or, because I'm evil, oh, I'm going to kill him anyways. The black skeleton works the same way as the green skeleton, except he has three hearts, so it takes two hell, two hits to make him run away from me. Those are your only three varieties of skeleton. You will have some that are knights uh, that have, um, have shields. You have other ones that can be on horses. They work the same way, other than the fact that you have an extra hit to deal with to either get around the shield or to knock them off the horse. Moving on. Bats. Bats drive me crazy. So, here we have the blue bat. This is your basic standard bat. It's just like the blue slime in that he moves every other beat. He can move any of the four cardinal directions, and he does so completely randomly. So, because he moves every other beat, it's a little easier to get in to get him for the kill. The red bat will move every beat. Every single beat also moves only the four cardinal directions. Which means if I'm next to him at any given time, his movements are totally random as well. He might hit me, or he might not. I've got a 1 in 4 chance of being attacked when I'm next to a bat. Or, excuse me, next to a red bat. So we stabbed him. The green bat that we're doing next is incredibly rare. So he only shows up out of, I think, one every 400 runs, and only in zone... Only in zone 1? Maybe not in zone 1 anymore. Any hoodles. Whatever it is, he can move on a diagonal, moves every beat. So he can move any of the 8 squares around him. There's actually achievements for killing three of them. And, uh... It's real, and it's it's because it's hard to track him down, because he's moving on the diagonal. Uh, black bats are kind of like red bats in that they move on the cardinal directions every beat. However... This guy has a 100% chance of attacking you if you are next to him. If you are adjacent to him, he will attack you. There is no getting around it, uh, unless you stab him first. So, he will always attack, whereas the red one, since his movements are totally random, may or may not attack you. Oh, I lost my multiplier because I messed up. Alright. So here we have the dragon. So this is one of the mini-bosses you'll face off against. You see, he just jumps every other beat. See, all these every other beat guys are easy to take care of. So the green dragon has no attack other than stomping on you. So as long as I'm not in his way when he goes to move, I'm totally fine. See, like that? I tried to move the same place he wanted to go to. Didn't work out so well for me. So the way you want to beat an enemy like this is you want to move at the same time he does. You see, I'm kind of like was moving in tandem with him. So I can stab him and then jump when he jumps. And I can stay right next to him without having to worry about anything happening to me. The red dragon that we're going to do next has a special power. So let's get him to come down after me. So he again also moves every other beat. If I end up in the same horizontal line as him, he will do a fireball. That fireball goes clear across the whole level. 
which can be bad news bears, especially if he breaks through a wall that you're not expecting. So, I can only attack him really from the top or the bottom side without worrying about getting hit. And you just do the same movement pattern there. Jump the same time he jumps, stab him when he's standing still. It's really not all that bad. You can use that fireball to your advantage if there's something you want to open or other enemies you're trying to get rid of if you line them up with the fireball, uh, like crates or skeletons or whatever, that will obliterate anything in its path. So you can use that to your advantage uh, and trigger the fireball on purpose so that way you can get to things you wanted to be able to get to or avoid uh, monster mobs. The blue dragon's a little bit different. Still does the same movement pattern. He has an ice blast that comes out on a cone. So... I can't even like dance around in front of him like I did the uh, like I did the red dragon. I danced in front of him a little bit to get around him. Can't do that with the blue dragon, or he will freeze you, and then you're right next to him for him to be able to hit you, which is no good. So, again, you got to be at the top or the bottom for him. Um, unless you have something super strong, you can also leave a bomb in his path if you want to bait him towards you. But it's something to be aware of as he goes in a full cone. So it's the space immediately in front of him, the three right there, and the five beyond that. So, it's got a very wide range that that ice, that ice uh, blast will hit. Minotaurs will charge you whenever they get eyes on you. So whatever direction, you know, he kind of follows me a little bit. As soon as he gets me in the same line, he just goes straight to that, and he'll go until he hits anything. It could be a wall, it could be another enemy, it could be a crate, a chest, whatever. If, if something stops him, that's where he goes to. The nice thing is you can just trigger him, and you know you've got a couple beats where he's down that you can stab him. Uh, the red minotaur only has three hearts, so you can get him in one kind of cycle. There's another minotaur, a gray one, that has five hearts. You, unless you have a stronger weapon, you're going to have to do two cycles with him. So you let him hit a wall, you stab him when he can, and then as soon as he stands up, you got to move out of the way. It'll trigger him to w run in whatever direction you just were, and you can follow him and take him out. Bats are, these big bats are another mini boss you can encounter on a level. So with these, they move every other beat again. Uh, they just have more health than, excuse me, than, than a regular bat does. So the gold bat will take two hits. Let's see, get here. Come here. Come on. There we go. So he took two hits. There's a gray bat that'll take three hits. So you have to be a little bit more diligent about where you're placing yourself next to him. Um, but that's the only difference between between the gold and the, the gray bat is they both move every other beat. Uh, and they will not directly attack you by default. Uh, kind of like the, the red bat and the blue bat in that regard. Over here we have another mini boss I kind of caged up. This is the banshee. You can see as soon as I hit her, uh, my music got a little little muted, which can make it a little bit harder to stay stay on beat. So whenever I hit it, she moves every every beat, but whenever I hit her, I get knocked back. So now there's a space between us, so I have to find a way to get her close to me. So we're going to do the dig buffering again. Dig, and there we go. So there's a blue banshee and a green banshee. Uh, just like the golden and gray bats, it's just a matter of the health. So, uh, the blue banshee has three, um, uh, three hearts, and the green banshee has five. So, you just have to dig buffer a little bit extra if you don't have a ranged weapon. So, here's some of the items you can see. So, we're gonna lose our multiplier and stop moving for, for a bit. So, you can have three different kinds of chests will show up. The orange chest will always have food or a torch or something in it. Um, so I've got an extra torch here. I'm gonna keep the one I gave myself at the beginning. But yeah, so those will always have food, torches, or other digging tools. You start off with a shovel by default, but there's different kinds of shovels, and there's a pickaxe and things like that that can let you dig different strength walls. Purple chests will have spells and rings in them. Um, those can be helpful items. Rings kind of give you like a permanent change of some kind. Spells will be something you can recharge after a period of time that will give you health, or extra firepower, or literal firepower in the terms of the fireball spell, which makes you um, essentially act like a red dragon. Uh, here I've got a shield spell. I can activate that, and it'll give me a shield around myself, and I nothing will hurt me for the eight counts that it is active. 
Black chests will have extra weapons or armor in them. Um, always go for a black chest when you have your base dagger. Or in no armor. The other kind of containers you can have are these three things on here. There's a crate, a barrel, and the urn. So, the crates and the barrels, you can hit and make them move, which could be helpful if you to, you can see right now, I can't open it. Uh, base dagger will not open them. So I can hit them onto a spike trap, that'll open them. I can drop them down a trap door, that'll open it and we'll have it waiting for me on the next level. You can also bomb them open. So that one had an apple in it. There, there's the kind of a random item pool that the crates and barrels can pull from. Um, you never really know what's going to be in there. It could be helpful, it could be not. The barrel, excuse me, the barrel you can also hit to make it move, but it won't just move one space. It'll fall over and it'll roll, and it'll keep going until it hits something. If it hits a dirt wall, it will break at that point. It has the same item pool that crates do. The other thing you have here is the urn. So the urn is kind of the holy grail. This will have something crazy amazing in it, usually multiple items, um, but it takes multiple hits to open it. So you can see I did a bomb and it only took a one heart away. Uh, spike traps and bombs will each only do one heart of damage to this thing. So you can see three things popped out, um, which are items I'll talk about at some later point. So it usually, you can have a really high powered weapon or a really useful spell so on and and so forth so if you find one i hope you've got enough bombs for it so now we're gonna do the weapon demo part and what i'm doing here is um i've switched to the bard because i don't have to stay on beat with him you see i can totally stop moving i don't have beat bars or anything uh he also has the added bonus of if it gets to the end of the song the level doesn't end it the song just loops so that'll make it easier for me to kind of show you what's going on without having a time constraint so, here we've got the broadsword. Now, what the broadsword does is it'll attack a spread of three enemies across you. It's only one space in front of you, but it can go off to the left and right of that space. So, that's really helpful for when you're in an area where you've got to worry about a bunch of enemies coming at you at once, because you can hit all of them at the same time. The spear will let you hit up to two spaces away from you, but only one enemy at a time. See, I only hit the first guy, and now I can reach the second one. So it, it's helpful to get you some range, um, but it's not the best at ranged weapon because you can only hit one thing at a time, and you still have to be relatively close to it. The long sword behaves a little bit like the spear in that you can hit up two spaces away, but it will let you hit both spaces at the same time. So I'm personally a big fan of the long sword. I find it really helpful for situations uh, where you've got a bunch of enemies and you need a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra oomph in your attack. The whip will let you attack five enemies across you, so one space directly in front of you, and then the two to either side of that. It's only one space in front, you can't go multiple spaces in front. It's not like it's got a spread of three, and it goes wherever it wants. It will let you hit one enemy at a time, however, so... To kill all these guys, I have to use five beats to be able to do it. The rapier will let you attack kind of like the spear does, I can attack only one enemy at a time, up to two spaces away. However, when I go to attack that enemy that's two spaces away, what will happen is I will lunge toward it and deal it double damage. You can see I move there at the same time, so it's great for saving on, uh, on movement, as well as getting you some extra damage without having to have uh, special armor or rings or anything like that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to show you is the dagger and the spear both have a special function where you can see on the left side of the screen it says throw. I have the option to throw the dagger, so kind of winding it up for a throw takes one beat. So I load it up, and now you can see it says press arrow key to throw. So whatever direction I push the arrow key, it's going to throw it that way. And it goes all the way until it hits the wall. It's the, it's the wall, it's not at an enemy any, or a crate or anything, it will go to the wall. So this is useful because you can take out a long line of enemies all at once. Because what this is going to do is it will do whatever damage I have, uh, whether it's the base dagger or I've got multipliers on it, it will do that damage to everything it encounters. So spear and dagger both have that ability. See, song ended, and now it's just going to restart. There we go. All right. 
So now we're going to work on the bow. So the bow can attack up to three enemies in front of you. And you'll see there's a fourth guy there for a very special reason. So the bow is just, there's no ammo for it. it the bow is just the bow. You can shoot it however much you want without worrying about it. It'll go three spaces in front of you, but it only does base damage when you have just the base, base one. So we'll go one, two, three. So now we've got a skeleton in front of us that has a shield. I talked about these a little bit earlier. To attack an skeleton with a shield, you either have to attack from one of the three sides that is exposed, or you have to hit the shield to make the guy drop it. So I hit him, and he drops his shield, and now he's exposed. But I still have to, you know, shoot at him again to actually do damage to him. So right now he's too far away, and he hasn't moved yet, so I have to move his space, and now I can attack him. And I wanted to show you that because of the crossbow. So the crossbow can hold three arrows at a time. You have to reload it after every three shots at a minimum. Uh, you can reload in between if you shoot one arrow and want to reload immediately. That is totally fine. It will let you do that. The crossbow can shoot up to four spaces in front of you and also has piercing damage. What piercing damage means is anything that is shielded, whether it's literally a shield like the skeleton is holding or the armadillos that have some inherent shielding in them, whatever the case is, this weapon will completely ignore that and attack them anyways. So we've got our first shot, second shot, third shot. You kind of heard there was a bit of a ding sound there. That's kind of the hint to remind you that, hey, your crossbow is, is empty. You just shot your last arrow. So I reloaded. I've got three shots again. I've got one hit. And now I can attack the skeleton. And instead of knocking the shield over, it's just going to kill him. The next weapon I'm going to show you is the flail. So the flail can hit a U-shape around you. It will hit all five of these enemies, and it hits all of them at the same time. It also has knockback. So if any enemy that you hit with this is not going to die, it has more health than the flail will take away from it, it will no knock them back a space. So it gives you some space between you and them, which is really great if you're facing off against a dragon or something you really don't want all up in your business. So you see that? It hit all five of them at the same time. Now, I want to, next I'm going to show you the Cat of Nine Tails. So the Cat of Nine Tails can also hit five enemies around you. However, it will only do it one at a time. It's kind of like a flail meets a whip. So I can hit any of these five enemies. However, it's only going to do one at a time. It also has the bonus of if you, if you go past an enemy, kind of like a pawn in chess, it will still hit it, but I still get to do my beat of movement. So I'm going to get rid of the guy in front of me. And as I jump to the space he was just at, I still get to make that movement, but it's going to attack one of the guys next to me. And you can see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move away from this guy, but he's technically in my U-shape that, that I can still hit. I'm going to move to the right again. It will attack him as I leave. So, and I can move it, do it moving towards them too. So, it's, it's a weapon that takes a little bit of practice, but it's definitely, it can be really useful. Next, I'm going to show you the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss is a, is a gun. Um, so, we picked that up. So this is a, a weapon you have to load every time you're going to shoot it. So right now, <coughs> excuse me, right now it's empty. I gotta reload it so that way I can, just kidding, I picked it up. I don't have to load it right now. I'd have to do it later. You have to shoot, you have to load it every time you're gonna shoot it. And it goes kind of like the, um, this is the dragon's ice pattern. Same thing happens with the blunderbuss. And so I'm gonna shoot all those guys all at the same time. Okay, so now you can see the blunderbuss symbol has smoke coming out of it. That tells you that, yeah, it's not it's it's not loaded. It, so I'd have to push reload to be able to use it again. You can also see it knocked me back a space. So it's got self knockback. So you gotta be careful when you're using it that you're not pushing yourself back into a spike trap or another enemy or things like that. And you see we've got the, the can-can line of the green slimes here. So here we have the rifle. This is kind of the last of the weapons. So this is... A ranged attack. This will behave kind of like throwing a dagger does, in that it will go all the way until it hits the wall. So this will take out the entire line of slimes. It also needs to be loaded. And you can see it says time zero in the in the little box. This is why I got confused with the blunderbuss. Is this one I have to load before I can use it? And I can load it up to three times. Now, I will fire immediately after loading it as soon as I try to make any kind of movement. So I can't like load up three shots and walk around the level with three shots. I can just load it up if there's a bunch of stuff coming at me and just fire them off. So, 
since I these are all basic level enemies, I'm just gonna load it up once. See, now it says times one. Just for giggles, sure. There's times two. Times three. I can do up to times three. I can't do more than that. You see, I lost my multiplier because it was like, no, you can't do that. So now when I push the arrow to the right, I am going to shoot at the slimes. And it's going to kill every single one of them. Boom! It's going to kill every single one of them that's on screen. There we go. Look at all the gold. I got nervous because the mini-map showed them all as red still. So you can see I still did all three shots. So it won't let me move while having the shots loaded up. And that's kind of it. That's kind of your brief introduction to everything you're looking at with uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. There's different levels of weapons made out of different materials or different th digging tools, different shrines and armors and things like that. But I will talk about that some other time. For now, uh, happy dancing and good luck.